October 26th. St. Evaristus, Pope and Martyr. St. Evaristus succeeded St. Anacletus on the throne of St. Peter, elected during the second general persecution under the reign of Domitian. That emperor, no doubt, did not know that the Christian pontificate was being perpetuated in the shadows of the catacombs. The Liber Pontificalis says of the new pope, Evaristus, born in Greece of a Jewish father named Judah, originally from the city of Bethlehem, reigned for thirteen years, six months, and two days under the reigns of Domitian, Nerva, and Trajan. This pontificate divided among the priests the titles of the city of Rome. By a constitution, he established seven deacons who were to assist a bishop and serve as authentic witnesses for him. During these three ordinations, which he conducted in the month of December, he promoted six priests, two deacons, and five bishops, destined for the various churches. Evaristus received the crown of martyrdom. He was buried near the body of Blessed Peter in the Vatican. The Episcopal throne remained vacant for 19 days. St. Anacletus had ordained 25 priests for the city of Rome. St. Evaristus completed this institution by settling the boundaries of each of these titles and filling the vacancies which probably occurred during the persecution of Diocletian. As for the decree by which he ordains that seven deacons make up a cortege of the bishop, we find in the first epistle of St. Anacletus a text which helps us to grasp and better perceive the discipline of the early church. There existed, amid the diverse elements which composed it in the first years, proud minds, envious souls, ambitious hearts, which could not bear the yoke of obedience, and who by their revolts and incessant and detraction fatigued the patience of the apostles. The deacons were to be the Pope's guards against their ill-intentioned projects. It was at the same time as St. Ignatius, the illustrious bishop of Antioch, that Pope St. Evaristus gave his life by martyrdom. The acts of his martyrdom are lost, but we perceive that the same faith, heroism, and devotion united the churches of the East and of the West. He is often represented with a sword because he was decapitated, or with a crib because it is believed that he was born in Bethlehem, from which his father migrated. The disciples of the apostles, by assiduous meditation on heavenly things, were so wrapped by foreshadowings of the life to come that they seemed no longer to be inhabitants of this world. If Christians esteem and set their hearts on earthly goods and lose sight of eternity, they are no longer animated by the spirit of the primitive saints and have become children of this world, slaves to its vanities and to their own irregular passions. If we do not correct this disorder of our heart and conform our interior life with its decisions and propensities to the Spirit of Christ, we cannot be heirs to His promises.